Hello everybody, you are listening to Alfredonian Etiquette and Chivalry. I'm your host, Alfred. The topic of today's broadcast is The Heart and Cain Makes the Complete Gentleman. Let's open our Bibles to the book of First Timothy chapter 2 and bring from verse 8 to 10 using the King James Version of the Bible. I read, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without rots and doubting, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women, professing godliness with good works. You see, you have to understand. Um, concepts there are many things about um the bible and christianity that you have to understand especially in the early stages for example when you are reading the bible you have to consider who is speaking and to whom is that person speaking to and you also have to understand if that person is speaking by the spirit or by themselves because understand that even the words that sit and seed are in the bible the things that Satan said to Jesus, the, the, the outcome of the things that Satan said to Peter, the words that Satan said to Adam, even the interaction between the devil and Angel Michael, you know, over the body of Moses, all these things are written in the Bible. The fact that it's written in the Bible does not mean that you should now obey it like it's written in the Bible, therefore obey it. God wants you to have understanding. You know, the in the book of Proverbs it is written, get wisdom, get knowledge, and in all you're getting, get understanding. God wants you to have understanding. You can't just read the Bible or, you know, there are a lot of people who like to quote scripture and say, because this is in scripture, you have to do this. They, they apply no understanding to what is there. For example, um, some might say, oh, God told someone, sell all you have and follow me. Therefore, all Christians have to sell all they have and follow God. If, they, if a Christian is rich, they are not following God. You see, that is foolishness. You completely have removed understanding from that interaction between God and the rich man, Jesus and rich man. You have also ignored everything around that. Because even the disciples, from what they said, the disciples consider themselves as rich. Because they said, who then shall be saved? You know, then Jesus explained to them something. What is impossible with man is impossible with is, is possible with God. You know, so the love of money, you know, is not going to be a hindrance to your relationship with God if it is kept in check, as in God is above it. The love of money, when you put money above God. When you put anything about, above God, it doesn't have to be money. It could be your wife. It could be your kids. You, you've heard people saying to, for, perhaps they are in a relationship. They, they tell their, they say about their wife or, you know, some women say about their husbands or, or even uh, boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, for, they say, you mean the world to me. That is a sin. Because you are saying that this person is above God to you. A human being cannot mean the world to you. A human being should not mean the world to you. Your children cannot mean the world to you. You know, there are people who, who say such things and they mean it, that you mean more to me than life itself. That is a position only for God. That is a position that you should only put God in. You know, so, like, what I'm saying is that when when you read the Bible, you have to apply and understand it. Now, this um, portion of scripture that I read to you, it even starts with, I will therefore that men pray. It did not say that God wills. So everything expressed here is Paul's wish, is Paul's will. That is not the will of God. This is why I said you have to understand if the person is speaking by the Spirit or not by the Spirit when you see something in the Bible. So this is his own um, opinion. And you have to also apl apply understanding. In understanding it, you understand the concept. Women were becoming more interested in worldly things and appearing like the world, looking like the world and fashion and all of that. They were taking their focus of devotion. You know, devotion and, you know, humility 
and service to God was no longer top. They wanted to be trendy. They wanted to be fashionable. That was on top. It is not like putting on jewelry and all of these things is bad. You see, there's nothing in the scripture that says so. Because when you look at all the people that God blessed, they had this in abundance. Do you, do you know how much gold and pearls that King Solomon had? And the, the, the gold and the pearls made people look and, and be like, wow. Look at what he, he has. Look at the gold and the pearls on his wives and on his concubines. God has blessed him with so much wealth. You see, how do you think the people saw the wealth of Solomon? It's based on all those things. It is not like Solomon exposed his um, vast treasures and, you know, the secret places where he stored his um, treasures and goods and all of that. And he would bring people to come and see. And then he lived his life as though um, he was he was looking, he's looking poor and wretched and, you know, his um, wives and companies did the same. No, they adorned themselves with jewelry and all of that. You see, but the thing is that, you know, there's a concept of you giving value to the clothes and not the clothes giving value to you. We live in a world where, you know, people, their clothes give value to them. That is why they want to buy brand name clothes for thousands of dollars. And that is where they get their word from. When they dress up, you know, they have to wear brand name clothes for them to feel like somebody. You see, and that is the problem. You have to feel like somebody first. You have to believe that you're somebody. Because no matter who you are, no matter how much you have in your bank account, first of all, you should not even be measuring yourself and your worth by your bank account. You know, you should measure yourself by the price that was paid for you. The price that was paid for you was the life of Jesus Christ. That is your value. How valuable are you? How valuable is Jesus? That's how valuable you are. You see, you can tell the value of an item by what is paid for, by what is used to pay for it, you see. And even if you consider or you say that man was worthless before, the day that God gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for us, we became super valuable. That is when we went from, you could say, if you want to look at us and say that it was no value before, from no value to the most valuable. You can't get higher in value than this. You know, if let's say that there's a painting, you know, it's it's, it's garbage, you know, and it, it, the painter who painted it is struggling and all of that. The day that someone pays for it, you know, especially through an official channel, a gallery or something, you know, when it is known that this person on record paid for it, that painting that was once worthless paid for it for like 7 million or 10 million or 20 million that becomes its value it goes from worthless to that so the moment that payment was made that is when that value the value changed you see in the same way that is your value you know your value is how valuable is is jesus you know you, you can't you can't begin to um um quantify that you know, so you can't put a a figure on your words. So stop using um, terms like my network is this or your network. If you want to say um, current net worth of owned assets, you can say that. Or if you want, you can abbreviate it into something else. But never say that my net worth or your net worth, you know, say that somebody's network is based on what they have in their bank accounts or the accumulative um, amount of the assets that they own. It is just the assets that they own, you know, for now, you know, at, 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 at the point in time. It is not their value. Stop um, um, equating people like if they are slaves. You know, if, if someone, um, if you consider that it is wrong to look at someone and say that their value is 20 cents, you know, to buy and sell a human being slavery for 20 cents or for a nickel or for a dollar, you know, or for pennies like it was done uh, many years ago. You know, if you can see that that is wrong, why do you think it is now better to now um, say that somebody's value is a hundred million or two billion? Is it because of, of it? Okay, let's say that um, someone buys you know, another human being for two billion. Does it then make it all right? Does that make slavery all right? Is it is it a matter of what was paid for the slaves? 
you know if slavery is wrong at one cent for a slave then slavery is also wrong at one billion dollars for a slave you know but in this case you are still using the language even though there's no transaction being um, actually made you are using that that same language you know and the same logic applies when you are assigning um net worth you know yeah yes you are defining people's value by the cumulative um amount of assets that they currently own you know don't do that and say that my network is so so and so this person network is so so and so leave um the world and their you know, foolishness we will preach to them we will change them and they will repent and they will start talking rightly but in any case back to what um i was saying you have to understand that this um um scripture about um clothing and dressing you know the spirit behind it is the understanding of modesty and you know you give them re giving value to what you wear you putting certain things on top you know let the vanity the things of this world the material things that god blesses you with don't let it overshadow or take your eyes off the giver of the gifts you know understand what matters let what matters you know be upfront now the topic of today's broadcast is the heart and cane makes a complete gentleman you know now some of you may be saying what relationship does it have with the bible i want you to understand that every culture has its own mood of dressing and what it defines as what it defines as modest or acceptable you know in this context of time when apostle paul was talking to these women these things that these women were doing were making what was turning people away from god in the sense of they were not seeing the spirituality it was not linked to um the appearance of a godly lady what they were doing in itself the wearing of jewelry and all of that was not wrong but at that time and in that place you know the people he was talking to you know in that culture being um trendy in the sense of fashionable adorning yourself you know obsessed you know you want to have the little jewelry and all of that you know kind of like how people want to have the little designer you know that actually obscured and it was actually turning people off from the godliness and you know from um them appearing you know how they should be you know apostle paul is the same one that emphasized that let your liberty in christ not be a stumbling block to someone else you know so it's that same concept you know so the jewelry in itself the dressing in itself is not um a sin but you have to understand modesty and in the context of that culture now in the culture in which etiquette and chivalry comes from you know the complete gentleman is the hat and the cane of course in this day and age the cane can be replaced with the umbrella you know but the a, an, a cane is more um accurate and of course for those of you who don't understand what a cane is a cane is basically a walking stick you know and that was part of the victorian era Edodio, Ed, edwardian era um etiquette that was part of the modesty of that time how gentleman dresses you know now we have moved into a different um culture but you see afridonian etiquette itself is a type of culture that is a mixture of victorian and edwardian era etiquette mixed with bible principles because you have to understand the meaning of etiquette and chivalry etiquette refers to um proper manners and good conduct in best society you know it doesn't deal with character it deals with how things are done you know a lady um, stands up you stand up as well as a sign of respect you know a lady wants to sit down you help her with her seat a lady will, um, is about to walk through a door you help her open the door that is etiquette it does not speak to the character you can be an evil person and have perfect etiquette you can be a bad person you can be a murderer and a killer but have good uh, etiquette but that means that you were probably raised that way as a child because most killers and most terrible people don't subscribe to that um kind of life and that is just the way um, it has always been right from the Roman era even till now they don't subscribe to it but chivalry has to do with character and it's actually kinds of links 
you building of your character with um the things that you do and your belief systems because chivalry has to do with um what you believe about um women um treating your fellow man treating those who are n who are not in the same station with you that's treating those who are um below you on the societal ladder because there will always be a class-based society so it would seem you know everybody is not on the same level you know all men are not created equal and all men are certainly never going to so far throughout human history there was no time that every man on earth lived with the same level of power and the same level of authority you know there have always been kings and and peasants and a whole lot of different classes in between king and peasants you know so that is something that you have to know you some people may be so ignorant that they say that they are they are not really kings today actually there are more kings now it is actually worse now than before in the name of democracy because um look at for example this lockdown look at how a few powerful people you know forced everybody to comply force people to stay in their homes you know look at all the um things that have been done by the so-called people in authority you know look at how you know we have seen that elections in many nations especially the nations that call themselves first world are basically a fraud and you can see how the same people are winning and the same families like look at the clinton family look at the Ob obama um lineage and all the people that are aligned with it look at how um it is just the same thing that is replicated when somebody has power they so find a way to replicate it in the next person that comes after them even if it is not somebody that is directly linked to their bloodline you can see that with even venezuela that is a socialist you know communist country it's even worse there you know so um you see the maruno and chavez you know you see how the the, the power was passed down and it is just basically the same thing and it's more chaos and more chaos so these are things you have to understand and in Afridonia etiquette and chivalry which is different it's a culture of its own you know so in this culture which i created but i told you it is based on victorian etiquette and edodian etiquette mixing that with um biblical principles so that that is where the chivalry comes from you know it's a different kind of chivalry it's a biblical um, based chivalry the, the the goal is purely to create a culture that will consume every other culture you know and of course in following the the line of the victorian and Edwardian etiquette you know so the hat and the cane you know some of the things from that era come into play you know so it is not compulsory but it is um a sign of your fully dressed you know you have to have um different clothing for different uh seasons and your the kind of clothes that you wear says a lot about you and you know how you dress is how you be addressed that being said if you are listening to this and you've not given your life to jesus christ i'd like you to go to alfred.vip and click on the salvation prayer link in the main menu when you do that, the page you come out that has a prayer of salvation, say that prayer and give your life to Jesus Christ. Thank you and God bless you.